In the heartland of America, the skies over Missouri have become a stage for an unexplained spectacle. Reports of UFO sightings have surged, with locals reporting strange lights and mysterious craft darting across the night sky. From rural farms to bustling cities, the phenomenon has sparked intrigue and fear alike. Witnesses describe encounters with eerie precision, leaving experts and enthusiasts baffled. As the state's residents grapple with the unknown, one thing is clear. This isn't the first time this has happened. This has happened before. Missouri known for its rolling hills and sprawling farmlands, has recently become a hotbed for something otherworldly. A surge of UFO sightings has captured the attention of residents and experts alike. Reports have flooded in from all corners of the state, detailing strange lights and unidentified flying objects darting across the night sky with remarkable speed and agility. These sightings have sparked both curiosity and concern, leading many to wonder, what the fuck is going on? From a quiet countryside to the bustling urban centers, no area seems immune to the phenomenon. Witnesses describe an array of encounters, hovering disks emitting pulsating lights triangular crafts with silent propulsion, and even formations of glowing orbs performing intricate maneuvers. The small town of Sedalia, for instance, has become a focal point for recent activity. Here, locals speak in hushed tones about the frequency of appearances of mysterious lights that seem to play hide-and-seek with onlookers. Farmers have reported strange crop patterns and electronic disturbances, while city dwellers share stories of late-night sightings that defy conventional explanation. Such widespread and consistent reports have drawn the attention of UFO enthusiasts and researchers from across the country. Experts in the field are analyzing the evidence comparing it with historical data and looking for patterns that could explain the uptick in sightings. Some suggest that Missouri's central location and diverse landscape make it an ideal spot for such occurrences, while other progressive theories point to secret military experiments or extraterrestrial visitations. This recent wave of sightings is not an isolated incident the state has a long-standing legacy of UFO encounters dating back to the mid-20th century. One of the most notable cases occurred in 1973 when a series of sightings culminated in a dramatic encounter near Piedmont. Witnesses then reported seeing a large saucer-shaped craft hovering low over the treetops an event that left a lasting impression on the community and cemented Missouri's place in UFO lore. Here's some fun facts I found out about UFO sightings while doing research for this. Almost three quarters of all UFO sighting reports in the United States occur between 4 p.m. and midnight, and they peak between 9 and 10 p.m., the more you know. The current surge in sightings has revived interest in these past incidents, prompting renewed investigations and a flood of theories. Are we witnessing a new chapter in Missouri's UFO history, or is this a continuation of an unexplained phenomenon that has been unfolding for decades? As more reports come in and the mystery deepens, one thing is certain. This isn't an isolated incident. As we delve deeper into the accounts, testimonies, and investigations surrounding these sightings, we aim to uncover the truth behind the lights in the sky. So what the hell is really happening in Missouri? And 
What does it mean for those who live under those mysterious skies? The answers may be as elusive as the objects themselves, but the search for understanding continues. The first notable UFO sightings in Missouri date back to the early 1940s. Witnesses described seeing disc-shaped objects and strange lights moving erratically in the sky. These early encounters laid the groundwork for Missouri's enduring association with UFOs. In April 1941, the Reverend William Huffman was called by the sheriff to the site of a plane crash near Cape Girardeau to deliver last rites. When he arrived, Huffman discovered it wasn't a plane crash after all, but a damaged flying saucer. He also saw two alien bodies, one of which was already dead and the other dying. The local Army Corps arrived, barricaded the area, and confiscated all film from the snap-happy photographers on the scene. This happened six years before the alien crash in Roswell. The Piedmont UFO flap in Missouri marked a pivotal movement in the state's UFO history. It began in February 1973 and quickly escalated to over 500 sightings of UFOs within three months. Reports poured in from all across the state, but the small town of Piedmont became the focus of the phenomenon. It all started on February 21st. The Clearwater R1 JV basketball team was coming back from a tournament game near Dexter, Missouri. Along the way, members of the team and the coaching staff saw a light off in the distance. They initially figured it to be an aircraft, probably a helicopter hovering just off the highway and dismissed it. They turned off the highway closer to Piedmont and then drove into an area of the state called Brushy Creek. And again, they spotted a similar light up in the sky. This time, their curiosity was piqued. So they pulled over, got out, and went to get a closer look at this light source in the distance. They said it was hovering about 50 to 100 feet off the ground. After about five minutes, the light source lifted up and disappeared over a nearby ridge. Initially, the players and the coaches didn't tell this to the press. And in fact, the coach at the time, Reggie Bone, didn't tell anybody about it. But nevertheless, with teenage boys as witnesses, <laughs> information got out rather quickly about this strange encounter. It grew into a local phenomenon with people going out into the community to look for these lights up in the sky and trying to figure out what the hell it was. Despite a number of people reporting sightings, local officers from the highway patrol sighted nothing in their observations of the area. And by April 1st of 1973, a little over a month after the initial sighting by the basketball team, police chief Gene Bearden told the St. Louis Post-Dispatch that he estimated that roughly half of all Piedmont residents had made a call to him to tell him that they had seen something up in the sky. Ken Johnson, owner of the Piedmont Park boat dock, said that he saw an object flying over Clearwater Lake at roughly 3,000 feet. He also relayed a story of some campers in the area who had seen lights underneath the water of Clearwater Lake. When they went to investigate and shine their flashlight in the water, the light source disappeared. Dennis Hovis, who ran the local radio station, KPWB, soon became the collector of various stories. People would call into the radio station and he'd pass their information and their stories down to the investigators and those interested in the press. Now, beyond the Piedmont area, there are also sightings that expand into that entire region. 
The most interesting, a truck driver driving south of Jackson, Missouri, reported seeing a large object chasing his truck along the interstate. When he stuck his head out to look and see what the fuck it was, he was struck in the face by some sort of light source object that broke his glasses. One of the most compelling accounts came from a local pastor, Reverend William McDowell, who observed a glowing object hovering above Clearwater Lake. His detailed and credible testimony added weight to the growing body of evidence. As the sightings continued, the media took notice and Piedmont became a focal point for journalists and UFO researchers. Witnesses of the Piedmont UFO flap faced significant challenges in the aftermath of their experiences. Skepticism and ridicule were common reactions, both from the public and authorities. Many individuals were reluctant to come forward fearing they would be labeled as delusional or attention seekers. This skepticism created a culture of silence where numerous sightings likely went unreported. Despite these challenges, some witnesses were determined to share their stories. The credibility of these witnesses, including professionals like Reverend McDowell, gradually shifted public perception and lent legitimacy to the phenomenon. The psychological impact on witnesses was significant. Many experienced lasting effects, including anxiety and sleep disturbances. The sheer number of sightings and the consistency of descriptions suggested that something extraordinary had occurred. The Piedmont UFO flap in Missouri remains one of the most intriguing episodes in the state's history of unexplained phenomena. Despite extensive investigations by UFO researchers and government agencies, no definitive explanation has ever been provided. The sightings of that year have become a cornerstone of Missouri's UFO lore. State Representative Chris Dinkins introduced House Bill 1261, which designates Piedmont, population 1,897, as the UFO capital of the state. The Piedmont UFO flap not only highlighted the challenges and impacts faced by witnesses, but also cemented the state's reputation as a place where the line between the known and the unknown is tantalizingly thin. The search for answers continues, driven by the same blend of mystery and curiosity that has captivated generations of Missourians. In 2023, the Piedmont Area Chamber of Commerce celebrated the 50th anniversary of the sightings with a parade and a festival. Oh, that's pretty fucking cool. I want to go. Fifty years after the Piedmont UFO flap, Missouri has once again found itself at the center of a surge in UFO sightings, capturing the imagination of both locals and enthusiasts from around the world. The state, with its history of unexplained aerial phenomenon, has seen a huge increase in reports of strange lights and mysterious crafts in the night sky. During the week of June 20th, 2019, multiple UFO reports were filed with the Mutual UFO Network, MUFON, and the National UFO Reporting Center, NUFORC, about large, white, orb-shaped objects in the skies over Kansas City, Missouri. Over a six-hour period, three such objects were witnessed by thousands, gaining attention from local and national media. The National Weather Service tweeted, We honestly have no explanation for the floating objects over Kansas City, which fueled numerous theories. DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, attempted to explain the sightings as high-tech balloons released from Cumberland, Maryland. However, these balloons typically stay in the stratosphere between 33,000 and 66,000 feet 
while the white UFOs were observed at 2,954 feet, making DARPA's explanation <laughs> highly unlikely. Missouri MUFON field investigator Larry T. analyzed three videos from different locations, finding 20 additional darker UFOs around the three large white UFOs. These fast movers, as MUFON calls them, were moving too quickly to be seen by the naked eye, with one calculated to be traveling at 8,200 miles per hour, or Mach 11. This speed led to speculation that the dark objects were either experimental U.S. military aircraft or of unknown origin. Several other UFO sightings occurred around June 20th, including red orbs at treetop and ground level in the Waldo area. 18 transparent kidney-shaped rods witnessed by MUFON field investigator James Baer and two metallic oblong objects northeast of Kansas City. Larry himself saw a bright blue object on top of a streetlight on the evening of June 20th, which caused him to have lasting light sensitivity after it shot off at high speed. The Kansas City chapter of MUFON hosted a town hall meeting on July 15, 2019 to present updated information and collect more reports. Although they expected 20 to 25 attendees, 150 people crowded into the small banquet room. The event was covered by the Kansas City Star, USA Today, KCTV5, Fox 4, Yahoo News, and several other media outlets. MUFON concluded that the white objects and the dark, fast-moving objects seen over Kansas City on June 20th remain unidentified, despite DARPA's explanation of experimental balloons. <laughs> Similar reports emerged from Kansas City in 2023. Witnesses there described a large, triangular craft with bright lights at each corner, hovering silently over the city's outskirts. One resident, Mark Edwards, recounted, I was out walking my dog when I saw it. It was enormous completely silent and it it just hovered there then it shot off into the sky faster than anything i've ever seen while these sightings have sparked widespread interest and speculation experts have been cautious in their analysis various explanations have been proposed ranging from advanced military aircraft to atmospheric phenomena however the nature of the sightings, especially the silent, rapid maneuvers and the synchronized movement of lights, has made the conventional explanations <laughs> sound like utter bullshit. Dr. Emily Harrison, an astrophysicist and UFO researcher, has been studying the recent Missouri sightings. There's a lot we don't understand about these encounters, she explained. The speed and agility reported by witnesses, along with the silence of these crafts, suggests something extraordinary. One of the most compelling recent sightings took place near the Lake of the Ozarks in June 2023. A group of campers reported seeing a massive disc-shaped object hovering above the lake, emitting a soft bluish light. One of the campers described the encounter, it was around midnight and we saw this huge disc just floating there. It was almost like it was scanning the area. We were all terrified but couldn't look away. After a few minutes, it, it just vanished into thin air. Another significant account came from a commercial airline pilot flying over Missouri in August 2023. The pilot reported a near miss with an unidentified object at an altitude of 35,000 feet. It was a bright metallic object moving incredibly fast, the pilot noted in his report. It came out of nowhere and then disappeared just as quickly. 
I've been flying for over 20 years, and I've never seen anything like it. As we look to the skies over Missouri, the mystery deepens. Each new sighting adds to the rich tapestry of unexplained events that have characterized the state's history. Whether these objects are advanced human-made aircraft, natural phenomena, or something more otherworldly, the search for truth continues. The stories of those who have witnessed these enigmatic events serve as a reminder that there are still mysteries in our world waiting to be unraveled. As the reports of UFO sightings in Missouri continued to accumulate, a particularly compelling piece of evidence emerged, capturing the attention of both the public and experts. On a clear night in October 2023, a family camping near the Mark Twain National Forest witnessed an event that would soon be the focal point of intense scrutiny and debate. The Simmons family, consisting of parents Linda and John and their teenage son Michael were enjoying a weekend camping trip when they noticed an unusual light in the sky. Initially dismissing it as a drone or aircraft, they soon realized this was something entirely different. The light grew brighter and began to move in patterns that defied conventional flight capabilities. Michael, an amateur photographer, managed to capture high-resolution images and video of the object. The footage showed a glowing, disc-shaped craft performing sharp turns, sudden stops, and rapid accelerations, all in complete silence. At one point, the craft emitted a series of flashes, followed by a beam of light that seemed to scan the ground below. After a few minutes, the object shot straight up into the sky and vanished. The family immediately reported their sighting to MUFON, which dispatched investigators to interview the witnesses and analyze the evidence. The footage provided by Michael was unlike anything previously documented in the state. Experts noted the clarity and detail of the images, which clearly showed the craft's shape and movements. Dr. Emily Harrison, who had been following the Missouri sightings closely, was brought in to examine the footage. The level of detail in this video is remarkable, she remarked. We can see the structure of the craft and the precise maneuvers it performs. This isn't something that can be easily explained away as a drone or aircraft. The footage reignited interest in Missouri's UFO history, drawing comparisons to the 1973 sightings. The similarities were striking. Both sets of sightings involved silent, disc-shaped crafts performing extraordinary maneuvers. The scanning beam seen in the recent footage also matched descriptions from the 1973 Piedmont encounters where witnesses reported a similar phenomenon. As researchers delved deeper, they discovered a pattern of sightings near specific geographic features, such as bodies of water and forested areas, much like in 1973. This led to speculation about whether these locations held some significance for the unidentified crafts. Were they conducting environmental scans or searching for something specific? The questions only fueled further investigation. One particularly intriguing incident connected the dots between the past and present. In November 2023, a retired military officer named Captain Robert Evans came forward with a story that had been buried for decades. He revealed that during the 1973 flap, he had been part of a covert operation to monitor and possibly intercept these unidentified crafts. According to Evans, his team had witnessed similar objects near a classified installation in Missouri. 
Evans described a night when they observed a glowing, disc-shaped craft hovering near a lake. The craft emitted a scanning beam, just as described in the recent sightings. Despite their advanced equipment, the team could neither identify nor track the object. It moved with a level of sophistication far beyond anything we had at the time, Evans recalled. It was, it was as if it knew we were watching and deliberately stayed just out of reach. The connection between the 1973 and recent sightings added a new layer of mystery to the unfolding story. Was there an ongoing presence or activity that spanned decades? The compelling evidence and eyewitness accounts suggested a connection that could not be ignored. As experts pieced together the puzzle, the anticipation grew. The Simmons footage, Captain Evans' revelation, and the recurring patterns pointed to a unique aspect of the Missouri sightings. It was no longer just about unexplained lights in the sky. Hell no. It was about a persistent, enigmatic phenomenon that had been quietly unfolding over decades. This revelation captivated viewers and left them on the edge of their seats, eagerly awaiting the next chapter in Missouri's UFO mystery. The skies over Missouri have long been a canvas for mystery and wonder, with recent UFO sightings adding new layers to the state's enigmatic history. Eyewitness accounts and compelling footage from the Simmons family have reignited public interest and scientific curiosity, drawing striking parallels with the 1973 Piedmont UFO flap. Piedmont has embraced its reputation by opening the UFO capital of Missouri Park. Diane Elkin, a volunteer who helped create the park, described its features, a 16-foot UFO, a six-foot-tall alien, playground equipment, and historical information about the sightings. Our investigation has delved into numerous sightings, examining testimonies from credible witnesses who described silent, maneuverable crafts performing extraordinary feats. High-resolution images and video evidence offer a glimpse into a phenomenon that defies conventional explanation. Expert analysis like those by Dr. Emily Harrison underscore the sophistication and mystery of these objects. Despite technological advances, we are no closer to definitive answers than during the Piedmont encounters of 1973. The similarities between past and present sightings, such as silent, disc-shaped crafts and enigmatic scanning beams, suggest a continuity that spans decades, hinting at a persistent presence eluding our understanding. Retired military officer Captain Robert Evans' revelations added a new dimension to the narrative. His account of a covert operation during the 1973 flap and the advanced nature of the observed objects hinted at possible ongoing surveillance or reconnaissance activities. These connections raise questions about the true nature and intentions of these unidentified crafts. The impact of these sightings on local communities has been profound. Towns like Piedmont have experienced excitement and disruption, and witnesses have faced lasting psychological effects. The presence of the unknown has left an indelible mark, combining awe, fear, and curiosity to fuel the search for answers. As we close this chapter, the significance of the Missouri UFO sightings becomes clear. These events are part of a broader, ongoing fuckery that challenges our understanding of the world. The need for further investigation is paramount. Advanced technology and open-minded scientific inquiry may eventually provide answers, but for now, 
the phenomenon remains one of the great unsolved mysteries of our time. The skies over Missouri with their silent, darting lights and unexplainable crafts remind us that there is still so much we do not know. Each new sighting adds to the shit show of unexplained phenomena, urging us to look deeper and question more. As the state's residents continue to watch the skies, one can't help but wonder, what else is out there watching us from the darkness, waiting to reveal itself? In the end, the Missouri UFO sightings leave us with more questions than answers. They challenge our perceptions, spark our curiosity, and remind us of the vast unknown that surrounds us. As we gaze up into the night sky, we are left with a haunting question. Are we truly alone? Or is something out there just beyond our reach? waiting to be discovered. If you dig this video, don't forget to tap that like button and subscribe. That way you won't miss out on more of my weird shit. And I really do appreciate it. I've also got some pretty kick-ass merch. Seriously, no shit. The link's in the description. Check it out. I got Scarinator t-shirts and tanks, Stay Creepy mugs, t-shirts, stickers, and all kinds of badass miscellaneous stuff. Until next time, y'all keep it real, keep it chill, and stay creepy! Catch you on the flip. Thank you for watching and listening until the very end. You kick total ass.